Berlin. Uh, sorry, the guy on the picture was not available, so I took the place. Um, first, I would like to say that I'm really happy to be here tonight. Um, I'm happy for two reasons. Um, the first one is because I can't even remember how many times I've been sitting on those chairs uh, listening to great speakers. And it's the first time for me to be on the other side of the stage, so I'm really proud of it. And hopefully it's going to be as interesting as the other talk. Uh, the second reason is because we're going to talk about something that really matters for me, which is team organization. At self-service, we iterate a lot on the way we're working, the way we are organized uh, within the team, and it's a pleasure for me to share with you what we've learned. Um, I would like to start uh, by saying a few words about me, what I've done. So, I would say that I, I have a classic marketing uh, background. I've done a business school. My two first positions were in uh, big companies like Renault and TomTom, Tom, and I was a um, marketing manager, project manager. Uh, and I would say that uh, my life changed a bit in 2014 because I discovered uh, entrepreneurship and uh, product. Um, so basically at this time I had a friend who were uh, launching a company, an app, a dry cleaning app, uh, mobile app, and he asked me to join as uh, the chief marketing officer. So I was in charge of the uh, customer acquisition, customer retention, and this kind of uh, classic marketing mission. Um, the, I would say that it's at this time that I discovered product, even if I didn't know that I was actually doing product, but uh, normally the product was in charge of my co-founder's end, but we were working closely together. We are also uh, trying to solve the problem by the product, etc., etc. So basically, without, without knowing it, I was actually doing product every day. Um, we raised uh, around 1 million euros, then we sold the company to Rocket Internet uh, in 2017. Uh, maybe you know the company because uh, it's still operating in Paris, London and Berlin. It's called Zipjet. Um, and after, actually, I stay around six months as, at uh, Zipjet as um, the city manager. But actually, I miss marketing, so uh, I decided to quit to, to find another job. At this time, um, so I joined Star of Service. Um, does anyone know Star of Service? Oh, cool. Okay, so I will explain a, a bit. Um, so Star Service is a, is a leading marketplace in service. So basically we are offering uh, 900 services. Um, it goes from the plumber to the lawyer or the Spanish teacher, whatever. So basically if you need something, then you can find it uh, on Star Service. If it's legal, I mean. Um, <laughs> and um, um, so we are operating in more than 100 countries. We have like uh, 100 employees. Um, and actually, it's completely free for the user. So if you are looking for something, you post a request, it's free, then you, we're going to present you some professional, and it's the professional that is paying for this. Um, yeah, so when I joined uh, in uh, 2017, actually, I was uh, just head of marketing. So I was in charge of all the classic marketing missions, customer acquisition on both uh, sides of the marketplace. Uh, um, customer side and professional side, uh, CRM, PPC, this kind of classic things. But actually everything changed in 2018, in last September, um, because uh, at this moment I took also the product team and we decided to merge uh, the product and the marketing within the same team, within uh, a growth team. So I will try to explain uh, to you why we decided to do this move and um, what are the advantages um, uh, what you need to, to keep in mind if you want to do the same in your company, some, uh, some advices about it. Um, so basically in September, so this change occurred in September 2018 because at this time we did a, an important switch of our business model. Um, in order for you to understand what we've done, I need to give you uh, some, some, uh, some clue about how we work. So before this switch of our business model, um, the professional were paying for contacting every lead. So imagine you're a DJ in Paris, there is 100 people looking for a DJ in Paris. If you wanted to contact someone, you had to pay. And now, uh, the, with the new model, it's completely free to contact uh, the lead for a professional, and you, the pro is only charged if the customer is replying to him. So basically, we are one step further to a transactional model. You can imagine how risky uh, it was for us because uh, before we were able to charge like 10 different professionals for one request and now we have to wait the customer reply so we are not controlling anymore 
um, when uh, we can charge a professional. Uh, at this time, this project was on the product team's end. Uh, we were uh, doing some tests in a few months, five or six months, um, trying to test this new model on some services, some professional, and actually we were a bit struggling. The results were not like, um, were not good enough at least to say, okay, let's go, we move everyone to this new model, etc. Um, so we were a bit afraid of doing this move, to be honest. Um, and at the beginning of September, the CEO came to me and said, I don't know what you do, you do whatever you want, but by the end of the month, I want to have the full platform on the new model. So that was quite challenging. Uh, basically, he asked me to do something in one month that we were not able to do in, in five or six. And I said, okay, let's, uh, let's do it. Um, so the, the first thing I, uh, I've done is that I built a squad in charge of, of, of this project. And di in this squad, um, I merged marketing, me, uh, product manager, Clément, who's here, uh, and uh, our CTO. And we work uh, together hand to hand on this project. And at the end of September, we succeed to roll out this new model. And actually, uh, it was actually a good move because the months after, we saw a growth of 30% uh, in terms of active users. And actually, this growth uh, didn't stop until then. And um, we even uh, reached a really important milestone for us in January because we reached the profitability for the first time, which is actually a really good uh, uh, milestone because it's the first time that a marketplace in the service industry is able to do it. Um, so the CEO came back to me. I say, okay, cool. So now you need to understand why it worked, what you've done. Like, uh, I want you to work exactly the same way for all the projects we're gonna have, because it's a really good success. So I ask myself, I think about it, I, and, and I realize that actually the key success of this project was just the thing, uh, was just the fact that we were working together hand to hand with the product and that we were able to build this kind of growth team for this project. So, more precisely, okay. Uh, more precisely, um, I um, was able to identify three key success of this new uh, this new organization and this team. Um, th there is for me three advantages. The first one is um, that you are you uh, by creating a growth team, you unify the customer journey. Um, to illustrate this, I would like just to share with you a personal experience that I had uh, last week. So I was looking for um, a hat, Supreme, I don't know if you know the brand, whatever. Uh, so I was looking for it, so I googled it, and um, the first result was uh, uh, from Cdiscount, and they say, okay, we have a good hat, uh, cheaper than ever, you can find it, it's wonderful. So I clicked on it, full of hope, and then I uh, see those hats, which actually are not Supreme hat, it's everything except what I was looking for. So basically I was really disappointed because marketing promised me something that the product were not able to deliver. And this kind of situation is actually um, occurs really often um, and the reason why is quite simple. Um, I can imagine that at Cdiscount the marketing team has an objective of growing the number of visitors on the website and uh, the product has uh, the objective of uh, increase the conversion rate of the page, for instance. So the marketing did this part of the job and say, okay, if we don't have more revenue, it's because the product is shitty, like the, the page doesn't convert. And on the other end, the product say, yeah, the product is not converting because marketing is bringing to me shitty leads. So they're not working together and they lose money and actually it's really frustrating for the customer. Um, you can also see this kind of thing. Uh, sometimes the uh, same feature is called differently on the landing page, on the app, and even sometimes on the customer support. Um, so it creates kind of frustration for the, for the user, and the, the user is getting lost. So um, if you are creating a growth team, and if it's the same team who is responsible of all the steps of a funeral, then you're making sure that you are bringing a good message to your customers and at least that is consistent, consistent for him. Um, the second advantage for me um, when you're building a growth team is that you're giving this growth mindset to everyone on your team. So um, I wanted to share with you this uh, screenshot that I took from uh, our product designer. Um, that she, she asked me last week 
what was the result of a new patch we released. And actually, that was the first time she asked me how many cash we did on a specific work she, she, she did. And I came to her and I said, why are you asking me? Like, you've been here for one year and you never asked any business result and now you're interested on it? And she said, I've always been interested on it, but uh, actually I never felt involved into business results. And it's actually a common mistake of a lot of companies that they are not able to enroll all the workforce in the business results. Um, so with, with the growth team, that now you, know, you, you make everyone working for something that they know, something that, that, that is shared within the team, and everyone is working for the growth and for the business, of, uh, for the result of the company. Um, and trust me, if everyone is working uh, uh, with this mindset, you're going to improve a lot their productivity and the result of the entire team. Um, the last good thing, if you are uh, actually uh, merging uh, your product and marketing team, is that you are going to have better marketing results. Um, this is the curve of our um, return on investment on uh, AdWords campaign uh, from Q3 and Q4 2018. So basically, it goes up when we decided to merge the team. Um, more precisely, uh, the return on investment on Google AdWords went from minus 80% to plus 40% when we decided to merge the team. The reason is quite simple, actually. If we take the example of Cdiscount that I showed previously, as a marketer, I will never, never spend any euro on a keyword if I know that 99% of the people will drop, actually, after the funeral. Um, what is funny is that uh, within the same time, we actually increased by 300% our investment. So we invest more now and we have better performance. So it's really a good thing uh, for uh, your marketing performance, obviously, and you're actually learning stuff that you can also bring to the product. For instance, if I test a new value proposition within an ad, or a landing page or whatever, if I see that it's converting more than the previous version, then I can put it everywhere on my product and I can give this, uh, keep this value proposition all along the funnel of the customer. Um, so that was for me the three advantages uh, of, of uh, merging those, those two teams. Uh, but I know that it's not, um, it cannot be easy to merge this team or at least try to break the wall that is between the marketing and the product team. So here are some uh, advice if you want to do something similar or at least if you want to try to merge um, the, the way the, the, your marketing and product team are working. Uh, the first advice is that you need to understand that uh, building a growth team doesn't mean that the marketing is ruling everything it's ac or that you can release your complete uh, product team. It's actually completely the opposite. You need to have a strong product. You need to have strong people working on your product as well. Uh, I'm a marketer. I'm not a tech guy, so I'm not able to run uh, product management. Product management is, is, a, is a job, I mean, so <laughs> I cannot do it myself. So I need to have like, people who are really good at it to help me understand something. Um, so at Startup Service, the first thing that we did when we decided to do this is to take our best product manager and promote it as uh, the lead product manager. And then now he's ruling actually all the product side, taking care of the process, daily interaction with the technical team, et cetera, et cetera. What I'm not able to do, actually. Um, the second advice I can give you if you want to do something similar is that you need to spread the growth mindset to your entire team and you need to make sure that people are ready to support this setup. Uh, to illustrate it, I took a simple example of two websites that you know, I guess, Booking and uh, Le Bon Coin. Um, I'm pretty sure if you ask the product designer of Booking if uh, he's proud of his pa page, he would say no, because the, 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 the design is quite ugly. But he would say, I'm really proud to have one of the pages that convert the most uh, uh, in terms of, of marketplace. It's something that is not really easy for some people um, because you're going to ask people to um, be less creative maybe or they're not going to be able to build the product maybe they imagine because they need to build something that converts. That's it. So in every designer, and I know a lot of, uh, a lot of designers who are thinking like this and I guess you know as well, if you ask them to do something ugly that converts uh, more, sometimes they would say no. 
I don't want to do this kind of job, my product should uh, uh, look like this, etc., etc. So it's not really easy, so you need to have the commitment of your whole team. At least you need to try. To avoid this kind of frustration within the, the, the product team at Star of Service, we did something, um, we, do, we are doing something every quarter. We have what we call a research project, and it's a project that is on the product and design and product management team. And we say, actually, you can do whatever you want. You can be creative on this project. This is not lead, uh, uh, this is not designed for the growth. So you can, um, I would say, uh, be creative on those projects. For instance, currently the product team is working on a transactional version of Star of Service. And we don't put any growth KPI or conversion KPI within this project. They just do whatever they want. The last advice I can give to you is that if you are um, if you want to merge your product and marketing team, you need to make sure that uh, the whole company is supporting this kind of organization. For instance, if we take again the example of Cdiscount, you cannot give different goals. You cannot say, okay, marketing team, you need to bring 20% more traffic and in the meantime, ask something completely different to product. You need to make sure that they are sharing the same goal and you need to make sure that the company is supporting this kind of, of, of uh, organization. Um, at Star of Service, we are working with OKR, so objective and key results. So basically every uh, quarter we are defining a corporate goal, which is actually the number one goal for the entire company. And then after we are cascading down this, uh, this corporate goal to the, to the team, to the different team, and obviously marketing and product team are sharing exactly the same objective. It's also the moment where we are building the team that's going to work on each project. So, but it's also the moment where we are merging different profiles to make sure that we, are, uh, we will be able to deliver the objective that we set. Um, so, that was actually what I wanted to say tonight. So, just to summarize, um, for me, like, uh, it was really a game changer for Star of Service when we decided to take this organization. I know that it's something that cannot be easy, so you, can, you don't have maybe to take like, this uh, radical uh, decision, but at least you need to try to, to work more closely uh, with the marketing when you are working on product, and uh, you need to work more closely with the product when we are working on, on marketing. Um, yeah, so that was it. Uh, Who has a question? Yeah. So just you to know, for you to know, it's a mic. You can throw it, and you have to speak in the black thing here. Okay. Hi. Thank you. Uh, you you call the this new team a growth team? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just because it makes sense for everyone, and there is no jealous because if you call it marketing, then product will be jealous, and the other way around. Thank you. Thank you for the pre presentation. Uh, as a marketplace, what are, the, what are your main uh, acquisition channels? SEO. Demand? <laughs> yes, yeah, SEO, okay. SEO, SEO, SEO. It's one okay. of the main uh, acquisition channels that we have. Okay, and what about Facebook ads or Google AdWords? I mean, it depends. Um, uh, we, we are spending money on AdWords, as I show you. Um, but we are doing it only on the customer side. Uh, for the professional side, I mean, we have kind of um, a specific acquisition channel on for the pro side and for the customer side. So Facebook, AdWords, this kind of stuff are used for customers, so for getting more requests, I would say. Uh, but for professional, we are using other uh, acquisition channel like a job board or this kind of stuff. Nobody wants to play with the ball? Mm. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> what, type, what type of people do you have in your growth team? I mean, PM or PO? Or it's it's um, mainly product manager, one product designer, and then after we have kind of special, uh, specialized uh, profile as well. So for instance, we have uh, people working only on, on, on performance marketing, uh, SEM, AdWords, and uh, etc. So it's actually a lot, like there is a lot of different profile, 
um, but we are making sure that we are matching the good profile for, the, for a good objective. That's why uh, I say that OKR is really important for us because it's really the moment when, when we set the goal and we say, okay, this is the team that is going to be able to reach this, this objective. But it's mainly product manager and, and classic, I would say classic marketing guys. Someone else? Uh, are you hiring? What? <laughs> are you hiring? Ah, uh, depends. <laughs> um, do you have any uh, example of uh, OKR uh, through the teams? So uh, the same objective uh, declined for developers, product managers? For, for instance, the migration uh, to the new model was actually uh, something that was shared within the marketing product and tech, uh, tech team. And actually, we did this move, the new business model. Uh, we did this move in France, like that was so in September. And for the quarter now, the objective is to roll out this new uh, business model to the, to the entire uh, uh, Star of Service marketplace. So we are launching this in more than 100 countries. So it's, it's uh, an example, a good actually example of, of an objective that you can set and, and be shared with the, within the, the different teams. Okay, but more concretely, uh, how is it uh, measured uh, for developers uh, vs for uh, product managers? I, I, I didn't get the question. What, what, what is the, the achievement? What is the, the for instance, for developer, the achievement is to have the technical side ready, for instance. Yeah. So I want 100% uh, of my platform ready to be uh, achievable, uh, activate on the new model, for instance. Uh, for the marketing team, you can have, uh, I want to, um, um, they need to have all the communication support ready, uh, prepared some documentation, etc., etc. Um, so, so yeah, you, you need after, of course, to um, cascade down individually uh, all those objectives. And it depends on the, the, the position of the people who are working on the project. Um, yeah, I'm a product owner and I'm really curious to know something about how you match product and marketing because this is kind of something innovative and from uh, traditional companies nowadays you have some, for example, business owners who will defend the marketing uh, strategies and then you have the product people who will just translate those marketing needs into product. So if you are a company traditional right now and you want to go into this new way, can you tell us what would be the most difficult things to do? What can it change? And of course, well, the advantages you just said them, but what is the most um, significant goal you will have after, which is really cool. Uh, you said something really interesting because you said marketing is defining the goal and then product is converting him into something real, let's say. So which me it means uh, that in your organization, product uh, manager are not involved in the decision making process, right? Well, they kind of are, but there are like very big heads above who also decide, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing would be actually to integrate uh, everyone, the, the whole team at the beginning of the process, like what we want to do, why we want to do it, how we want to do. So what's your idea? Okay, that's cool. How we can convert it into the product? What kind of message we should have, etc., etc. So for me, the good thing is, is, is really to, to set this team and make them work on, on, on the funnel from the beginning to the end. Thank you.